Whoa, today is a big conversation. This is about the body and the body-soul connection. In fact, the body is a technology that you don't own. The first part of that sentence, the body is a technology, check, okay, I can understand that, that I don't own. Most people are going to stop there and go, that's ridiculous. Of course I own my body. My goodness, I have sovereignty, I have freedom, I have all of these things. But actually what you have is the assumption and the illusion of all of these things. So they are going to be bitter pills today to swallow. In other words, difficult truths to face and contemplate in today's conversation. But it's going to lead you somewhere. It's going to lead you directly into the enormity of your power and your potential because let me tell you about your potential it is something so much richer deeper bigger than you could ever dare to contemplate because a lot of people will say yeah I kind of I know my potential my potential is big no your potential is beyond what you would dare to dream it is Today's conversation is a realignment with that. There's some very, very deep understandings that are going to come out of this conversation. In fact, this level of conversation is not something that I would normally share in a public platform like this. In fact, it's probably the first time that I am. Normally, teachings like this are reserved for my online community, but I feel very called to share this with you today. So, if you don't feel resonant with what I'm saying, you're welcome to leave. You know that. That's always the case. Honor yourself. Please do. Please honor yourself. Uh, for those of you that are here and feel intrigued and called to be here, mm, this is a big, beautiful, heart-opening, soul-connecting, life-changing conversation. There's going to be four components to this conversation. The first part is going to be about understanding the body-soul connection. There are dynamics in this body-soul connection that we really don't speak about. At least I've never heard anybody speak about what I'm going to share with you today. I'm going to talk a little bit about the sun. I don't think I'm going to go too deeply into that, at least not in this conversation. I'm going to talk about intelligence and what we think intelligence is. And I'm going to talk in the end. The very last thing I want to talk about is the most exciting, and that is, okay, what then? How how do I deal with this? If I know that my body is a technology that I don't own, how then do I own it? How then do I regain control over the vehicle? How then do I become sovereign, autonomous, etc.? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very exciting conversation. So let's start with the first, and it's probably the, the, the biggest chapter in the book that I'm going to share with you today. The biggest chapter is the first one, and that is this body-soul connection. Now, we understand things like the body is under the influence of the ego, right? Because it is. The ego is very much in control. This is what we call the personality self, the ego self, very much in control of the body. It's the narrator in the mind. The ego is not the bad guy either. The ego is only the hurt you. That's all that the ego is. It's the hurt self that through its trauma and through its pain has a big gaping wound. And that big gaping wound is ensnared by dark controllers, those who have been controlling humanity, have used the woundedness of the ego to instill and insert programs into the ego. Therefore, the ego is under the enslavement of some very dark forces on this planet. Those dark forces, many of you know about, and um, you'll know this as well, that they're not as powerful as they used to be. And why is that? That's because we're doing something utterly miraculous no matter what movie you've watched in the past you know this is like a top gun maverick <laughs> um jason Bourne. i mean think about all of these superheroes this is all of that rolled into one the task that we undertook to come here was utter insanity but it's working so when I talk about dark controllers, I don't want you to go into, oh, you know, these these beings that control. No, they once controlled. So I should really call them once controllers of humanity. They're still under the illusion that they have full control. But by the time we get to point number four, you're going to understand that they really have not none, but just very little. Let's come back to the ego. So the, the body is, in a sense, enslaved, owned by the ego. The ego runs the body. The ego is enslaved through programs and control mechanisms by the dark controllers. 
we have a misconception about the body. And that is that we say, my soul is inside my body. You know, I'm sure you, at some point you've thought or said something along those lines, like my soul is inside of me, my spirit is inside of me. This is not accurate at all. The truth is it's the other way around, as is most things that we've been led to believe. The truth is your body is inside your soul. Your body exists within your multidimensionality. It's utterly cushioned by and surrounded by this multidimensional layer upon layer upon layer of intelligence and consciousness. This is your infinite self that surrounds the body. The body is right in the center of it all. Therefore, you would say, well, hold on a minute. The body should therefore feel safe, protected connected but it doesn't it feels the opposite it feels rejected alone abandoned confused so how is that possible disconnection this is part of how this war for your body the war for the technology that is your body has been fought you see if i say to you a war has been fought for the technology of your body you're going to go Oh, well, a war has been fought for humanity's mind, because a lot of people can understand that easily. And it's true. You know, if you own public perception, man, you're powerful because that's such a huge commodity. But this is beyond control of the mind. This is control of the body. Now, I'm going to come back to the mechanics of the body and the soul in that connection. So stay with me. Wars have been fought for this. The control of this technology and many of these wars were not even upon this planet or in your lifetime or your living history these wars have been fought intergalactically for eons and eons of time and i can't say to you we've lost but there was a time where it was looking pretty dodgy it was looking really difficult and and the planet as you see it right now is testament to that where you have a lot of people in a lot of disconnection, holding a lot of pain, holding a lot of trauma, uh, really being directed by their ego, being run essentially by the ego. Now I said the mechanics of that body-soul connection, I wanted to come back to it. This is an important piece. In order for the soul to come into the body, to animate the body, a piece of the soul must enter the body. So whilst it's not true to say the entirety of your soul lives in your body, It would be true to say a piece of your soul, a piece of the life force of your soul that is able to animate the body comes in. As you are born, this severing of connection between the body and the soul occurs. Now what happens is a piece of the soul, for want of a better way of saying it, becomes imprisoned in the body, which is why a lot of people feel trapped. It's why a lot of people feel stifled and trapped and almost panicky, anxious, because there is this piece of the soul that remains stuck in the body. So when the technology of the body gets hijacked, there's that piece of the soul that now cannot return back to the soul, has to keep incarnating into the body over and over, over and over in an attempt to reconnect body to soul. And then the soul can be whole again. This is a big piece of information. For the longest time, we've been under the impression, you know, that we're free, have bodily autonomy. Uh, We've even fought for these things to be returned, to be restored, assuming that we had them. But we've only ever had the illusion of these things. We've only ever had the thought, the idea that we were free, the idea that we were independent thinkers, the idea that we were making our own path, free to be who we wanted to be. These were all illusions. And it's kind of like, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a funny example that I'm going to give you. And it's one that I really mean with love. An alcoholic who goes to an AA meeting for the first time has a very difficult, very painful path ahead of them. They've got to say, I am an alcoholic. So they've got to acknowledge something that is so difficult to acknowledge. It's a truth. But it's one that they've been avoiding for a very long time and it's so difficult to see. But when they see it, they can no longer unsee it. And by the way, if you're an alcoholic listening to this, I love you. You're amazing. Don't you dare give up on your healing because it's absolutely possible. But the similarity for all of us is that the acknowledgement is difficult. The acknowledgement is painful and it requires courage. Courage that you don't even know that you're capable of or that you have. You're going to have to draw on that level of courage to see the things that I'm sharing with you today. Things like, wow, 
we were so worried, weren't we? When certain medications came out recently, we were so worried, we, uh, a large portion of the awakening community, were so worried that it was going to sever the body from the soul. And actually, all that that was ever going to do was make the severing permanent. But there was an unacknowledged something there. And the something was, but the severing has already occurred. The soul is already not connected to the body. So it's not going to happen out there in the future. It's happened back there in the past. These are these difficult acknowledgements. Already, the body has been living in a disconnect from the soul. This is a very serious situation. This is the thing that all of these wars have been fought for. This is the reason you came in here to take control of the technology again, thereby realigning the body to the soul, which brings everything back into balance again. It brings creation back into balance again. In case you wonder about it later on, I did speak about that little fragment of the soul that gets, in a sense, locked into the body. You might then think, well, surely that piece of the soul can realign and reconnect and wake the body up. Yeah, that would, that would be a reasonable thought, except the ego is so strong. The ego has really enslaved the body. And this is a very, very difficult thing for people to understand that they are not their pain or the story associated with the pain, because that's what the ego is comprised of. And it's because the ego became so big, really took on the role of personality, took on the role of the I and the me and the self, which was a hijacking in itself. Because the ego did all of that, that soul fragment was rendered unconscious. Now, this is going to bring me into part two of our conversation where I said I want to talk just a little bit, just a little brief conversation about the sun. <laughs> in much the same way that we've got this thing of, oh, I don't want to lose autonomy. Meantime, we've already lost it. I don't want to lose sovereignty. We already lost it. I don't want to have my body disconnected from my soul. No, that happened long ago. There's also, and maybe you've heard this kind of conversation, there's also a conversation out there that says, oh, you know, there are beings out there, rather malevolent, uh, powerful billionaire type beings that want to initiate technologies to cover the sun, to block out the radiance of the sun. And those of us that are aware of ascension and the connection between the sun and your ascension, those of us know the danger they're in. And we're saying things like, oh, we can't have the sun covered up, you know, assuming that it hasn't been already. Assuming that this technology has never been created and doesn't already exist and hasn't already been implemented because to a degree it already has. However, the galactics, meaning the off-planet beings who really support love and work with humanity, the galactics have worked very hard off-planet to allow at least some of the radiance of the true sun to permeate the consciousness and it's because of that, it's because of that, that the body can now start awakening. And now what happens is something very interesting. We understand how there's different versions of ourselves, right? Like there's a, a version of you that's lower and, and, and perhaps prone to depression or sadness or anger or jealousy or whatever it is. But there's also a version of you that's higher. You've interacted with that version of you that's so wise and peaceful and loving and knowing. And these seem to be very different versions because they are. Because you are multidimensional. You exist as all of these bodies at the same time. However, you've not been connected to them. You've been trapped, for want of a better word, stuck, imprisoned in the body. Now, because we've got some natural sunlight coming in, and because of where the sun is in the ascension cycle, just that trickle is enough to get you to start interacting with versions of you that are beyond the entrapment of the 3D body consciousness. And it's not as clinical as saying, well, you know, there's the 4D self and the 5D self and the, the 3D self and, and, and these are individual versions because within 3D, there are so many octaves and therefore so many versions and the same applies to 4D, the same applies to 5D. So there are a multitude of aspects of you. We haven't, of course, been able to connect with the fullness, the wholeness, because that is a beauty within itself. But more importantly, we haven't been able, we haven't had access until now to these various, for want of a better word, versions of self. So right now, you're looking in the mirror, assuming you're seeing the same body. This is still me, you know. I've still got the same hair. It's still 
gray over there and I still have that wrinkle that just won't seem to go away over there so you look in the, in the mirror at the body and you go well it's a mistaken thought this is me it's one thing you're stepping into and out of various versions various bodies of you and animating various bodies or various versions of you throughout the day this shouldn't be possible if the once controllers had full power that should not be possible but what they're doing is they are leaping very frantically, very quickly to try to stop that from happening. It's not working very well, but that's where their plans are aimed at. So I did say I was going to make this a little bit about the sun very brief, but let's go on to point number three. Point number three is about intelligence. And again, it's one of these big misconceptions, bitter pill to swallow here as well. We do regard ourselves as free thinking, uh, intelligent but what we are is very programmed, very conditioned. So programmed that we're programmed to think that we're free. Schooling and the schooling system is set up that you're given parameters, almost like a box. And you're told if you can go into that box of parameters and you can learn and recite the information that's given to you there, then you're going to be deemed intelligent. And you're going to be able to do perhaps it's equations or, you know, write books or whatever it is based on that intelligence. That's going to now be the foundation. So there's no free thinking. There's no ingenuity. There is prescribed intelligence. This is what the schooling system was designed to do, which isn't really intelligence, is it? So when we were given accolades and degrees in our schooling that shouldn't really have been understood as intelligence, instead an ability to recite information. True intelligence, true, oh, your true intelligence is beyond. It is so beyond what you think is possible. Before I get to talk about that, though, you know, this is part of that very difficult thing to acknowledge. Not just, okay, so intelligence is not what we were told that it was, but free thought, free thinking. We think of ourselves as free thinkers. It's a difficult thing to see, well, I've been programmed to think in a certain way. So the thoughts that I freely <laughs> concoct all on my own are actually drip fed into our consciousness, programmed through multiple generations for us to recite. But now we get to the important, now we get to the really important part, point number four, which is okay. So if I know these very difficult truths, I have never had bodily autonomy or sovereignty or freedom of thought or a, my access to my natural intelligence. If I know all of these things, I could run off into the corner crying uh, and be very distraught or, or, hmm, I could start getting excited. And I want you to really start getting excited. I want you to really start thinking, well, the lengths that these wars for the technology of your body, the lengths that these wars have gone to to prevent you from accessing what is rightfully naturally yours are off the charts. The measures that have been taken to prevent you from reconnecting, because when you do, not only do you have full access to a, a level of genius intelligence, a level of wisdom, a level of compassion, a level of understanding, a level of knowing, a level of miraculous. Your, your real nature is to perform miracles. This is your truth. This is your natural innate ability. We shouldn't even call them miracles, just your everyday abilities. We would currently from this point of consciousness, call them miracles. But that would just be your everyday expression of life. That is you in your potentiality. And of course, every attempt has been made to sever you from that. There is a fine print to the clause that we metaphorically signed when we came into this incarnation, and it was, you can get out at any time. But you've got to choose to. And there are going to be traps, and there have been traps, and the traps look like this. There is you trapped in unconsciousness and then there is the illusion of higher consciousness given to you in whatever form for a very spiritual person it's going to look like enlightenment for a very materially or orientated person it's going to look like wealth and riches so there's going to be enticements that look like an up leveling that look like i'm escaping the matrix i'm transcending the matrix there's going to be that and it's going to be a trap. It's going to be something with a ceiling on it that you cannot see beyond. So this fine print is a very tricky one indeed. You can be free when you choose to. 
So how do you know that you're not being trapped? The moment you choose you, the moment you see through all of the lies and all of the illusion, the moment you dare to come into the I know nothing, the moment you acknowledge, well, I haven't had free thought, sovereignty, independence of intelligence, uh, natural intelligence. I haven't had any of these things. It's a very difficult place to put yourself into. But when you do, you're actually stepping into surrenderedness. And you're stepping beyond surrenderedness. You're stepping into a powerful place called the I know nothing. I know nothing. And that is where true knowledge true connection can begin. Now, yes, this video is the beginning of a path for you. And it's a path which is going to be a little bit rocky at times because it's the body technology is still under the directorship of the ego and the ego is still very much under the directorship of dark controllers. However, for those who are willing and those who feel called to, you're welcome to join my online community where we can really grow together and where you can be given the tools that you need to move beyond the constriction and the restriction that you found yourself in. The limitation of disconnection, which has defined the war against this technology that is the body. You know, if you really think about it, God's source consciousness is what your soul is made of. So look at the insanity of the dark forces. Look at the insanity of their plan. See, they knew the bigger picture all along. Disconnect and entrap a little piece of the soul into the physical body. Then own the physical body and create a completion to that severing. Thereby, God's source consciousness is never going to be whole again. That's what the dark controllers honestly thought and intended and believed that they were capable of doing because at the core of their beliefs is we are more powerful than God's source consciousness. They have their illusions and there are many, but you don't have to be a part of that world anymore. You don't have to be the victim of that anymore. As soon as you come, as soon as you come into the Wow, I know nothing. Your liberation actually starts because now you can begin to actually gain true connection, knowledge, information, etc. Whilst I would love to serve you by having you join my online community and giving you more tools to navigate this path ahead, I know that just in giving you this conversation, it orientates you into the right direction wherein that realignment can happen. And I want to leave you with this one final beautiful thought, and that is the realignment is inevitable. It's only how soon it's going to happen. It's not, will it happen? I hope, I hope I'll be okay. I hope I won't be enslaved. No, you are already, because you're listening to this, you are already not entrapped, enslaved, ensnared in that system. Your liberation is utterly inevitable. It is only a matter of time. So on that note, I want to leave you with this wonderful little video about time. Enjoy it. Lots of love, everyone. And I'll speak to you really soon. Bye-bye for now.